Well, welcome back to Life on Cars. Hope you're all keeping well. And in tonight's episode, I'm going to try and fix the door mirror on the Rolls Royce. It's become detached from the mounting point and I can't see how that's happened. And it's getting really annoying because every time I close the door, the mirror falls off, which isn't a good thing. <laughs> so uh, let's see how we got on. Let's see if we can tackle this problem. Let's go. So the problem I've got on this mirror is the whole thing is detached and I can't really for the life of me see what's happened. It doesn't look like anything's snapped from what I can see, but I do need to take this base plate off and maybe try and get the whole mirror off so I can see what's going on. So from so according to the um, owner's manual that I found online, there's a little plastic flap just on the side of the mirror there, which we can prise forward. And then there's a grub screw in there. Now I've already found a, an Allen key that fits, but it's very small, which is worrying because um, you can see there, the Allen key fits in, but I'm going to give it a shot of WD because uh, there's a potential that this Allen key could be tight. Right, I've given that a little shot of WD. I'm just going to let that soak for five minutes while I put the kettle on. Right, the other thing I've done, as you can see, is I've just put a bit of masking tape under here because if this does come loose or if I slip with any tools, I don't want to scratch the paint. So I'll just put that on for a bit of protection. Let's see if that Allen key will slack on off. Here we go. Yes, it's moved. I'm just gonna move it forward and backwards just to, um, it doesn't feel too bad actually just to get it loose in the thread. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. Good old WD-40 has done its magic again. Yeah, it's coming loose, look, the whole thing. So let's get that wound out and then see what happens. Needs to come a bit more yet. What I'm hoping is that I can get to the electrical connector without taking the interior um, door panel off because obviously it'll be less work. Whether that's possible or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. So the post has come back. Let's just see if we can get that connector to come out of there. It feels like it's barking on something. The harness. Oh, it's moving a bit more. Oh, I've got wires. Can we get to the connector? Will the connector come through the hole? There's two connectors. There's one. Come on, come to daddy. There we are. Oh, that's good. Oh, there's another. Three. Okay, <laughs> Christ. Okay. Wow. Well, that one's nearly disconnected itself, look. It's hanging off. Okay. Right, let's get them disconnected. Oh, 
Well, I'm pleased that I don't have to take the um, the uh, door panel off because there doesn't seem to be anything else wrong with this door so far, in electrically. So, um, well, there we are. We're off. We're off. Right, let's have a look at this, see what's going on. It is absolutely blowing a gale outside. It's rattling the doors in the garage. Right. I can't see anything broken. That's the first bit of good news. There appears to be... Let me just zoom you in a bit more. There is a spline bit there, look, which looks like it has come out of the... Now, um, let's have a look. Yeah, the spline, the spline bit should be in there, should be pressed into there, I think. So that's somehow, that spline bit there has detached itself from there. I can't see anything broken. However, I do know these are supposed to turn, and I'm just wondering whether that... So that spring there, I'm guessing that... Well, it's, it's all free, but it's a bit rusty. I wonder if that should... I'm not sure how these... That's very simple, isn't it? It's just like a sleeve there with... Um, and that bit rotates. And I'm guessing the spring puts tension on so that when you go to turn it, it must press that down and then allow you to turn the mirror in. So... Uh, I think that's just a bit dry, so that might need a bit of lubricant. Because this looks like this sleeve here with the star washer on it. It looks like that bit should turn in that one, which is a separate sleeve, which it does. Um, whether it was seized and it got knocked and that's what caused the spline bit to pop out, I'm not sure. So the question is, can we get that spline bit to go back inside there? How am I going to do that? Am I going to have to press on the back of that, maybe? Um, Right, I need to give this some thought. Bear with me. So the problem I'm going to have here, by the looks of it, is because this spring washer, these sleeves, they need to be slid down there like that. And then the spline bit needs to be pushed back in there. But I'm going to be fighting against that big, strong spring, I think. Um... And also, I mean, I might just try tapping that down now and see what happens. But um, my gut feeling is I might have to take the star washer off, take the spring off, push the sleeve with the spline back in first, then reintroduce the spring and then allow that star washer to relocate again, which could be fiddly. So I think I'm just going to try tapping down on this first with something and see if... Because I'm not sure how far the splines need to go in. Problem is I need someone to hold this. Does anybody want to come and hold this while I tap that down? Because Mrs. Life on Cars has gone out. God damn it! Uh. I need to figure out some way to hold this, just so I can try tapping that in. Right, this is a bit of a crude experiment. 
but what I've done is I've attached a pair of mole grips onto that collar and I'm just going to gently tap down on these mole grips now and I'm just, I'm just trying to test to see how easy those splines I mean they must, be, they must have to be tight those splines because they're going to be acting against that strong spring but um, it's worth a shot let's just give it a tap Sorry mole grips, I know you're not designed for this. just comes straight back out but that's what needs to happen because that had gone started to go tight there again and need to figure out some way to press that back into there well the experiment with the mole grips has taught me something and that is that I'm not going to get this back in just by hitting it down because I'm fighting against that spring and the splines they will they do need to go in um, a lot further into um, the top of the mirror um, up here so I'm gonna have to take this horrible star washer off these are horrible to get off um, they spring loaded all those tabs basically lock into a groove around there. So I'm going to have to try and persevere. I might end up breaking this star washer and I might have to source another one. Um, but unfortunately, unless I can get this off, slide the spring up away from the sleeve and then, um, which will expose the splines, which I can then hopefully devise some way of pressing it the splines all the way into the housing and then I'm not fighting against the spring then I'll be able to slide the spring back on and relocate the star washer so it's going to be a bit fiddly sadly uh, it's not going to be an easy fix but I think it's worth a go because the mirror itself it works the glass works the glass moves the chrome's good um, you know there's actually nothing wrong um, Oops, there's nothing wrong with the, sorry, nothing wrong with the mirror. The mirror works electrically, the chrome's nice. It's just that that annoyingly has, um, again, whether um, someone has forced it or knocked it when it was in the car park, but the, prob the only problem with this mirror is those splines, that spline fit in there has come out of here. So there must be a way to get that back in. So leave me to it. I'm going to try and remove this star washer without um, cutting holes in my hands. What I'm trying to do is I've, I'm squeezing the uh, star washer with a pair of mole grips, which is distorting the washer. And it's, it's starting to release the tabs. As you can see there, it's, it's coming off. There we are. So it's bent it, but I might be able to straighten it out and reuse that star washer with a bit of luck. We shall see. But it's, um, it's off now. So let's see. So there's the spring. I can move that. And then I can slide that. I think that's sticking a bit on there, you know. I think that just needs a bit of a, a clean up. And then I might be able to slide that lower sleeve all the way off and then I'm left with this bit here where I can see all the splines now and I can see how far that it needs to go in as well so uh, yeah I'm just going to emery tape that up a bit and see if this lower sleeve will slide up
think this is what goes wrong with these mirrors on these S sets is these two components rust and seize when they should be completely free of each other to allow the mirror to to turn in and out without putting excess force on the um, splines so I reckon this was seized while it was in the car park before I bought the car someone's moved it or knocked it and that's what's forced the um, the splines out of the housing right let's see if that'll slide all the way up and off now Yes, it does. Right. I am now left with the collar, which is the bit that needs to go in here. So now I can slide the collar all the way through that and I can now see what needs to happen. So that needs to be pressed all the way in there and I'll be able to just maybe put some um, more grips or something on there and work that in all the way but what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna put what's called Loctite on these splines to lock it in to position um, into the uh, into the mirror and then it'll just be a case of sliding everything back down and seeing if I can relocate the the collar the lower collar over there so that, and then the spring and then it'll be a case of relocating the star washer but I'll have to try and straighten the star washer up um, beforehand but I'll deal with that later the first thing I'm going to do is get this back into the mirror housing properly. I think I might just give it a little bit more of a clean up first and then we'll go for it. Right, so I'm going to use this stuff, it's called stud lock, it's normally used on threads and it's a bit like a glue, basically it locks um, threads in and I think it's probably going to be useful on these uh, splines just to hold it in a little bit better so let's get a dribble of that on the uh, on this sleeve and then we'll f we'll uh, force that down into there as far as we can get it and hopefully uh, it'll stay in Well, as you can see, it's gone in and it's gone right down past the uh, the end of the spline. So I don't know if you saw what I was doing there. It was a bit crude, but basically I just um, put the mole grips around the top like that and then I was hitting the end of the mole grips just to, to knock that post all the way back in there. It's got the stud lock on and it feels super, super solid in there now. So... I don't think that's going to come out. Yeah, I've just had a really good pull on that, that post and it is not coming out of there and I don't think it will, to be honest, because all that's going to happen now when this is prop when this is back together properly is 
all that post is doing is it's kind of um, get this on the right way around so that's normally like like that okay so all that post is doing it is it just it's just sitting there to allow for the mirror to lift up see those little uh, risers there the post is basically a allowing the spring to put a little bit of spring pressure on the housing to keep that locked down so that when you do turn it in the spring just basically is pulled it in a bit collapses a little bit to allow that to turn the post it's what i'm trying to say is the post itself isn't it doesn't actually get a lot of pressure to bring it this way um, because the, the collars will just slide on it. Like I said, I think what's happened on mine is the collars were seized. So then when someone has moved it like that, that has then put a, a twisting motion on here. And as well as that, at the same time, because they were seized, when it's turned on here, it's, it's pulled that down over and, st and started to loosen it off on the splines. I really hope this is going to work because the passenger side one is all not as bad as this one. It hadn't it hadn't come detached, but on mine on the passenger side, it's loose as is a little bit loose. So I think it needs the same job doing. It basically just needs this pushing back into there, locking in, and it needs these slidey bits um, freeing off. So the only problem I've got now is I need to try and straighten this. Um, this horrible star washer and to do it properly I need to take these connectors off so I can get the star washer off and uh, and straighten it up so um, I'm gonna have to do that but it's okay because I can just match these colors up with the other end on the door afterwards because I can't really I mean I could try and like I could try and put that down like that but you can see what's going to happen if I start trying to hit and straighten this star washer. It might damage the cables. So um, if I want to try and reuse this, really, um, I'm going to have to um, get it off. And these plastic connectors will not go through there. So, uh, But these are old school um, connectors and they just have a little spring on them. So... Let's start uh, popping these out now. If I zoom you in so you can see. Don't know if you can see. There you are, look. Can you see there's like a little um, spring there that sticks out? See it sticking out there? So you just depress that in like that. And then the pin will slide out like that, look. And they come out and then all you need to do when you put them back in is to open the little is to op um, move the tab out a little bit so uh, yeah I didn't really want to do this but again um, let's do it properly and uh, let's take all these these out so we can straighten that star washer up properly
Right, right, I've straightened the washer up as best I can. It's never going to look this, look uh, <laughs> as straight as it was, but all of the uh, the little teeth are lined up, so I think it'll do the job. So uh, I'm going to start putting it back together now. So I'm going to pop that back on first. Then it'll be this sleeve that way around. Then the spring. Then the spring washer. Or the star washer, I think they're called. Horrible things. All right, now all that's ready now to get pressed back together. So, uh, gonna give it a whirl there, eh? see what happens. So I think a little bit of copper slip on that uh, post, just so we don't have problems with it seizing up again. And then we should be good to go. So I just need to press that clip now back over the um, post and get it to those teeth to lock into the groove. A couple of screwdrivers, I think. Mm, that's tight. Nearly. Just a little bit more on this side. I don't think she's in there. She's in. Well, it's gone in, guys. The star, the uh, star wash has gone back on and gone in its groove, and it's working absolutely perfectly. Look, look how lovely and solid that is on there. Watch. Turns in, and then. Oh, happy days. <laughs> oh, yes. It's solid. Absolutely solid. Just how it should be. And it and it turns in and locks. Oh, yes. <laughs> happy days are here again. <laughs> so I just need to carefully... Prepare these now to be reinstalled. So you can see the little um, female terminals there. You just need to put a, sh a little screwdriver down inside it and carefully bend the tab out just a little bit like that. And that means when you put it back into the connector, it will uh, lock back in. So I need to do all these. So there's another one there, look. And on these male ones here, we just have to carefully go in from the side and fish out that little uh, tab, just gently. There 
think that's enough for that one. See there, little tail sticking out. Need to do that on all the male ones now. Top tip, if you're doing this, <laughs> make a note of, uh, or take some pictures of where all these go in because these colours are different on the car, so you can't match them up on the car. So, uh, yeah, which I didn't realise until I uh, had a close look. So, um, just take some photos and make a note of which cables go where in the connectors. <clears throat> And there we have it, one fully rewired and repaired mirror. Okay, before I put that back on, I want to do something on the car. We're a bit mucky and grimy underneath the uh, mirror on the paintwork, so I'm just going to carefully peel this masking off so I can reuse it if I can. And, um, And I'm just going to uh, have a bit of a polish around where the mirror goes on. Right, that's all ready to accept the new mirror, but I do need to give the mirror itself a little bit of a clean because uh, She'd a bit grubby underneath and a bit green, look where I missed when I was cleaning it. So uh, yeah, give this mirror a bit of a polish up and a clean and then we'll have it back on. Well there we are, doesn't it look splendid? Got rid of all that uh, Horrible moss, green algae growth, whatever. So it's time to get it back on. I think I'm going to just pop the grub screw all the way out and put a bit of uh, anti-seize on the grub. And then we'll uh, connect it back up and feed it back in. I just wanted to mention, if you've got one of this type of mirror on your SZ, then I would recommend, if you can slacken that grub screw off, I'd recommend that you release this and squirt some um, spray grease or some kind of lubricant in there. If your mirrors are working fine, that should be part of your maintenance. Um, just back the grub screw off, pop this off and squirt some uh, spray grease or some sort of um, lubricant in there because if that sleeve that you've seen on mine, if that seizes, then this will work its way loose. So um, yeah, I'd recommend you do that. So there's a bit of a copper slip on my grub screw. So I'm just gonna pop that back in there. Lovely, I think we're ready to go back on. So gasket on first. And then we'll uh, we'll offer it up.
Well, I'm over the moon with that and it's all working properly electrically as well, so bonus. I hope you enjoyed following the journey of the repair there on the SZ Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit 3 Dormera. What's next on the Rolls-Royce? Well, I have started looking at the back brakes, which looks like it's going to be quite a long job because it does need brake pads and a few other things doing. So I've started that. Come on, I'll, I'll just give you a sneak peek. Yeah, so this is going to be the next big job on the roll, sorting out these back brakes and getting the handbrake working properly for the MOT. So yeah, it's going to take quite a long time to film that and edit it up. So I might chuck in a couple of smaller jobs in between uh, filming to keep the, uh, the channel going. Hope you enjoyed the episode and if you did give me a thumbs up, give me a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you haven't already done so. Hitting that subscribe button, it doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me with the channel. And also share the videos if you think there's somebody that might uh, find the video interesting. So until the next time on Life on Cars, stay safe, stay well, drive carefully and I'll see you all again very soon with something else on the channel. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.